I'm on fire. I'm not afraid to die. How you? Nah. I'll be dressed in white. White light. White light. So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So right after the Subaru Levard review, I couldn't pass the opportunity to review this Subaru Evoltis slash Ascent. I don't know where that Evoltis name came from. Maybe a Lancer Evolution and a Corolla Alti. Anyway, so I prefer the Ascent name better than Evoltis. But of course, it's marketed here as an Evoltis, so let's stick with that. What we have here is the 2022 Subaru Evoltis. This is the only variant here in the Philippines. And I'd like to thank again Subaru Pasig and Sir Glenn Hadap for allowing me to review this. His contact details will be here. <laughs> Being the Evoltis slash Ascent, unlike most Subarus, this one is made in the USA. So this one competes with most of the 7-seater, 6-seater SUVs there in the United States. But let's stick with one competitor which is the Ford Explorer because that one is being sold here. So let's see how this compares on that because that Explorer was a really really good SUV. So ground clearance here is 221mm, more or less the same as the for the Explorer and you have LED lights here all around even the fog lamps I forgot to mention this in my Subaru Levord review this is the same layout but this one has fake vents here but it is forgivable a lot of chrome here cladding here and then around in the grill there's a lot of chrome here as well and then it's gloss black here I don't mind it's gloss black because it's on the outside anyways there's a lot of creases here as well on the hood and this also has the updated eyesight 4.0 so on the side profile here like the side mirrors here. I do like this look, the silver trim on the black part. Unlike some of the competition, it's gloss black on black. I don't know why they do that. Also, you have roof rails so around, chrome around the window sills. The side profile itself, there's nice character lines, it's very smooth. There's a lot of cladding with chrome inserts here on the side. So, here at the rear of the Subaru Evoltis, this part looks like more of a BMW, just being honest. There's some resemblance to it, and then you have big bulbous cladding here but at least you have real exhaust on each side like in front it is plain looking and there's also chrome trim around here so open the boot up electronic tailgate by the way look at the space here it is massive so even with the seats up you have 304 liters it's pretty decent enough if you're carrying like six or seven people here also being it all as you will look at the the gap from the floor to the boot but at least there's no boot lift but just watch out for this you have an underfloor storage you can also put their tonneau cover there which is cool and then your spare tire oh your spare tire is underneath here there's a 12 volt socket here one light only here at the right side and then grocery hooks here on each side and then you have a Harman Kardon system here on the right side only and then there's hooks on each side and then let's fold the seats down very easy just pull this latch and they fold the oh great so folding the seats down is pretty easy. You don't have to go all the way inside unlike some of its competition. So with the third row down, down you have 1,345 liters. And then with all of the seats down, you have a whopping 2,499 liters. Which is probably the biggest in its class. And I think that's even more than the Ford Explorer itself. So that's about it in the exterior and the boot of the Subaru Avoltis Ascent. I'll show you the interior. The interior of the Subaru Avoltis. Ooh, that's the thickest door that I heard in the Subaru for now. So here in the cabin, okay, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me, just being honest. I mean, there's soft touches here everywhere around even the dashboard. The visibility out front is good. Again, like all Subarus, you have a center display here. And most of the buttons and the safety reminders are above the infotainment system. And this is what I mean by mixed bag. Yes, soft touches here, leather here and there. There's wood trim here, a false wood trim, but I take that over gloss black anyway, so, and then you have your memory seat buttons here, just on the wood trim itself, so if the car is beeping because this particular unit is already low back, so I have to rush this just a little bit. So despite the false wood trim here, it does make up for it for the soft touches leather here. The leather in here is more of the durable side as well with the seats. These seats are big, I mean, there's not much bolstering at all. And then you have your window switches here, they're angled again. You have a lot of cup holders on each side of the door. My water jug doesn't fit but it holds it in place at least. And then here on the left side there's a space here for your phone. And then below that you have 
two blank buttons and the rest of it for adjusting the height of the tailgate your your cross traffic alert your electronic stability control and then your headlight leveler adjustment i finally got that right and then like you usually have your analog speedometer analog tachometer with a digital display in the middle steering wheel this is the softest leather on a steering wheel i've experienced in a subaru so far and then also like all subarus you have the plastic paddle shifters here they're nice to the touch steering wheel on the left side you have your infotainment functions and on the right side you have your cruise control functions and you have heating steering wheel function why do you need that Anyway, as well here in the infotainment system, there's large air conditioning vents and then there's also touch sensitive buttons. I'll demo it later before I have a drive and then below that you have your climate control functions and then below that you have a 12 volt socket of space for your phone, your X mode, off-road mode, auto vehicle hold function and two USB ports, one aux cord and then a place for your phone. And then gear lever, that's the only part that's gloss black here apart from the infotainment system as well. Surrounding that is silver trim and you have the false wood trim again. And then you have ambient lighting for your cup holders. My water jug fits in both of them. And then here on the passenger side, there's another cubby space here. Fits my phone, then glove box. Okay, it's pretty small. Then surrounding the center console box, it's also leather with a removable tray. Not much toys in here, but it's really deep. And then above here you have a panoramic sunroof, the controls are here where your lights are as well and then a sunglasses holder with a mirror here that's actually cool and then sun visor, there's a vanity mirror with light, it's low but it's not even working anymore. They extend, I expected this because this one's made in the USA, they're supposed to extend, good job. So that's about it here in front of the Super Voltis Ascent, so I'll show you the party piece of this car. The second row. One week later. So here now in the second row of the Subaru Evoltis slash Ascent. Yep, still sounds pretty good. And also the first Subaru I encountered with a sunshade. So it gives it more of a premium feel. Oh, you notice something. I'm wearing black. I had to reshoot this entire interior, the second and third row, because everything wasn't going to plan like on that day. The the car itself was low, but that's why at front you can hear the beeping sound. It got worse when I sat here in the second and third row because as I said, this car was low, but and my camera was also low, but so space here, the back feet room, knee room is excellent. And also despite having a panoramic sunroof, I have still so much headroom. I'm 5'4 by the way, and take note, look at that. Again, show you. That's how much space I have. And also unique to this Subaru Evoltis slash Ascent, you have captain style seats here. I mean, they're really comfortable. I mean, they're not supposed to be sporty, but... And look, there's no bolstering whatsoever. You have lights above here and air conditioning vents. Same here for the third row. Nice soft premium touches, leather here and there with the white part here again on the door. And then again, you have the fake wood trim here, but it's pleasing to the eyes at least and then you have a lot of cup holders here one here above and then two more here below my water jug fits as well you have two map pockets here and then here in the center you have your climate control functions 120 volt outlet two usb ports and then even further down but you have two cup holders which is nice although there are on the floor like literally it fits my water jug at least but look here from the seat in case you want to put something here yeah it is quite a reach also, there's like a halogen puddle lamp just below the door. I just noticed that today as well. And then going back to the seats, there's also mechanisms there in case you want to go to the third row. And then folding down the captain's seats, it's two steps. I like there's even a number designation on the side. It's very easy to fold the seats down. Also, there's armrests on each side of the captain's seats. And then you have two isofix anchor points on each side. And unlike the front seats, all the captain's seats are manually adjusted. I mean, you go far and go, whoa! <laughs> Yeah, that's how forward I can go and how far I can go from the back. So speaking of the back, look how easy it is to get to the third row. I mean, in case you want to carry an extra passenger, like a seven person, you can sit here on the floor. I'm usually the one who offers myself to sit on the floor most of the time. So anyway, let's go here now, the third row. I mean, it's very easy. If you're skinny like me, yeah, it's very easy. So look, sitting here in the back, I have a lot of knee and feet room. It's excellent and then headroom. Oh my gosh, hold on. Okay, that's my headroom now, but it's still very doable. So, small adults and children will be fine here in the back. And there's a lot more toys here as well in the back. Like I said, the two lamps here, and then the air conditioning vents. And then on here on the left side, you have two cup holders, a cubby space, a speaker. They fit my water jug. 
two turning points on each side and then on the right side it's almost same layout but you have a third cup holder now and on only for the right side you have two USB ports and a cubby space so if I sit here now in the middle oh yeah sitting here in the middle is alright as well so you can fit four or five of me here in the back and also I just noticed now there is no transmission tunnel in the second one and here in the third everything is flat here so that's about it here in the interior of the Subaru Voltis Ascent I'll show you the engine I'm wearing my red shirt again So this is the engine of the Subaru Evoltis. It's a 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer 4 flat 4 engine that produces 260 horsepower and 375 newton meters of torque. Almost the same figures as the Subaru Levord 2 liter I've driven earlier. I mean, I know it's just the engine bay, but a little bit of complaints. For its price point as well, this one costs 3,480,000 pesos. Where your gas struts? And there's no engine cover. I mean, even the Levord had an engine cover at least. And look at the intake, it's huge. 0 to 100 kilometers per hour is done in 8.4 seconds. So I expecting this a little bit peppy. So with that, it let's go for a dive. One week later. gonna dive the Subaru Evoltis. A few things I missed here. You have the same additional information display on top of the dashboard and then the infotainment system. Well it's nice to have I found the maps just a little bit laggy but at least there is and then reverse camera they're like all Subarus. Little bit pixelated but then again still good to have. And then like every other Subaru I've tied out so far there's a nice way to the steering wheel and then this one has paddle shifters like before and they just floor it. Okay, seems peppy already, I can tell. First time flooring it. It doesn't feel as peppy as the Levorn that I've driven, but since they have the same power figures, but this one's not bad. I mean, it kicked down pretty well. I'm just in drive mode. And then the paddle shifter, same response. Oh my gosh. Wow, okay, it's pretty punchy. Then I noticed the NVH is pretty good as well. Yeah, there's a little bit of tire noise, but it ain't too bad. NVH here is excellent. The, the cabin is so quiet, and the aircon is so freaking cold. And then over humps and bumps, let's try them out now. Okay, soaks them up pretty well. This is probably the most comfortable Subaru I've tried out so far. It's it's that good. Yeah, and then I'm surprised I got you stayed immediately then here over to land there's the big bump here yeah so it's up pretty well yeah and the cvt like all subs it's so responsive it's so good and yet again like every subaru review i've done so far one of the best cvts i've tried out and then diving it a bit more i noticed the steam feel it's just the right amount it's not too heavy not too light but it's all right for what this is. And then here the twisty bit. Okay, you'll definitely have fun driving this thing since it's also a turbocharged engine. It soaks up bumps and hops pretty well. Handles amazing for what this is. I think it's a little bit better than the Ford Explorer, which I'm comparing this a lot. Of course, this is the only competitor in our market. And then here tighter seats easy to drive surprisingly and what i like with this evoltis slash ascent despite being a big car big seven seater car this handles really really well and it's so punchy it's not as punchy of course as the ford explorer because that has way more power but this one is not too bad at all your body lean okay there is but it's not too bad Yeah, and for a big car, I expect to be a bit thirsty, but so far I've been averaging 
20 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's around 5 kilometers per liter. But I gotta say that's better than the Ford Explorer's 4.3 kilometers per liter. So at least this is at, at least more fuel efficient than the well, Ford Explorer itself. And the straight line, it just wants to keep on going. It is so punchy. Wow, you can hear a bit of turbo whistle as well. <laughs> and the brakes, not as good to explore, but good enough. So, that concludes my review of this Subaru Evoltis slash Ascent. I want to thank again Subaru Pasig, Sir Glenn Hadap here, for making this review possible. I'll have one more Subaru review coming up. Stay tuned for that. Bye-bye.